<laughs> Don't leave me hanging, people. Don't leave me. <laughs> That is the link for our planning sheet. And and I'll also, I'm gonna share that. Just, you know, am I, it makes the screen all gross. I've just decided to adopt a completely whiny persona for the rest of my life. So I'm just gonna whine. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to share the screen or do you want me to just let people link there? And when I say you, <laughs> it means anybody else making the decision but me. Um, sharing screen is helpful, I think, probably, okay? Okay. for following along. Okay. I'm just, I was just concerned that maybe somebody's, yesterday I was on my 14 inch laptop screen, which kind of blows. Oh, yeah. Oh, be everybody hard to ready see. for this? We're going to go Inception for a hot sec. All right. There we go. I don't know if that helped now that I'm not looking in there. There we go. Ah, oh, lovely. Okay. Oh, this probably will help. My bad. Sorry about that. Yep. <laughs> I saw it in here. I'm like, oh, wow. Nobody can be in my cave of despair with me right now. It's not a cave of despair. I made that up. Uh, I'll just go ahead and get started, I guess. And assuming nobody's like coming in at like exactly two o'clock, it's the greatest. Well, if they do, we'll put the recording up in a few. Oh wait, then back. I'm just gonna wait for a second then, and mute this and take a drink. Yeah, once the Hackaway event closes, we'll grab the video files from the recorded session and put them on YouTube for anybody mm -hmm. who wants to watch them. I mean, obviously, there's not enough on Netflix these days, so. No, but I did start watching some Scandinavian slice of life drama last night. Hmm. The Norse. That's really all I have to say about that. The Norse. Perhaps a little bit been, different personalities when it comes to drama. <laughs> I binged the Squid Game last weekend. I enjoyed it. Oh, I'm not quite ready for that. That's going to emotionally like tear me apart. I already know. If you can get past episode six, the rest is e is relatively easy. <laughs> episode six. By the time you're invested completely, that's when you're destroyed, and then you have to go to therapy after that. Oh, dark. That's a great one. I, that one's Danish, isn't it? Is it Danish? I don't remember. This one, I'm not sure what it is. Something on, uh, oh yeah, German, that's right. All right, it's, it's two o'clock, okay. so anyway. uh, let's jump in. Okay, so um, a bunch of us have been talking about an expanded uh, testing data set. Of course, y'all know we use Concerto um, and have used it for a long time. It has some uh, functionality limitations, based on the bibliographic database, as well as some things that a lot of us use in production that are not included in it, like circulation modifiers and org units. So uh, we started, I think it was last winter at some point, uh, talking about expanding that. Um, and then, so there are two parts of this project. There is an expansion to, or enhanced concerto data set which is what you see on the screen here. This is a tabbed document, which I did also link to in the chat. If you wanna pop in there and you can see different things, uh, different tabs, I already said it's tabbed. You can go through there. I'm not gonna go through all of those. I did, however, see there were some questions here from Taryn um, and I'll go in there except for the little hop in thing is right over those tabs. So I'll wait a second for that. Um, Bill Erickson has very kindly set up a server for us to add different types of data through the interfaces. Pardon me. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for Lisa. Down PDO? in PDO. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so 
And then this cheerful animal valet is actually the password to get into that server. I believe if you click on the project discussion, that may have the actual link to the server. Yay, there it is. And then has this password and spreadsheet. This is kind of a historical document um, from the beginning. You'll see there's some dated stuff down here. Those dates have obviously passed. Oh, it was December of 2020. Uh, so you can go in there. I'm not going to scroll through there, but you are welcome to. Um, and then Bill had just put out uh, through email some of the experiments in terms of, I believe, packaging the data sets. So I'm going to stop talking for a second because mm -hmm. um, other than I do want to go to Taryn, your question, and I believe that that was, oh my God, that thing is right in the way, sorry. That's all on the actors tab. Actors tab, thank you that had to do with adding um, patron and staff accounts. And I put my feedback in here just on the first three questions that you had about, is it really, do we really have to have differentiated passwords for each uh, account? And I don't think for either one of them that we need to. I mean, it's not like we're keeping accounts secure from one patron to the other, one staff account to the other. And I think it would actually enhance like a testing or training experience to not have differentiated passwords. So that was my thought too. Um, yeah. And so, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, and I think, you know, as far as I could tell, just the local admin, I mean, not the local admin, but the main admin account is the only one that gets set on install so all of the rest of them could be set to you know demo one two three or whatever um rather than trying to refer oh, yeah. back to the control uh, yeah absolutely list all of the time and that yeah. would certainly make it easier. Uh, you know it's uh if we don't have to add to and maintain that concerto data set list that would be well and i'm sure i think we could even to. pair it back like i don't i don't know that we need to have even the list of the staff accounts beside i don't think we have to have a list of the patron or staff account um, yeah i mean i don't i don't know that the list is necessary if they all have the same password well even if they didn't have the same well yeah i guess if they did have different ones we'd probably need to reference that uh, Jason Stevenson says changing the passwords of existing accounts will affect the existing live tests. Oh, okay. Okay. Automating um, tests would be easier with a single password. Yeah. The um, the live tests. I don't know how much that should affect this because the live test. Uh, uh, may not play nicely with all the data that we're adding anyway. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think it's something we've really focused on necessarily. Um, I, I guess the point being, would, would we be running the live tests on this larger data set or would we continue to run the live tests on the smaller concerto existing set? And we don't have to answer it right now, but that's part of the question, I suppose. To go a little further into that, what specifically are the, what's the purpose of those live tests? Uh, they're just, you know, they're unit tests, except they run on against the concerto data instead of an empty database. Um, it does seem that ideal, it, it would be great if all of our live tests could run off a larger data set. Um, that's just a, another thing we have to figure out if we're going to do that. Um, it's not a totally different data set, Jason. It's it's concerto and then a bunch of stuff that people added. So in theory, the live test would continue to work. I just it's not something that we've really talked about. Right. Uh, 
Um, and, and other things to do about the passwords is there is a, uh, a strategy to how the passwords are created. So even if they're not all the same, you can tell, you can guess what they are. Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just, you know, one more kind of obstacle didn't, doesn't seem to be necessary. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. I often go in and just change the passwords just mm -hmm. because I, I do don't too. feel like having to figure it out every time. Rogan said I envisioned it as an expansion of Concerto. No, that was exactly yeah. the, the vision for it is an expansion of Concerto. There is a secondary project that has to do with... Lynn, there's quite a bit of feedback on your mic. I'm oh, sorry. Um, that has to do with a production size database. and that, But that's not what we're talking about today. Right. And we can if you want to, but... Okay, so, but we could leave all of the concerto data as is and use the same password for all of the new accounts. And that way we wouldn't have to. Um, um, I'm curious about the, the topic of adding new accounts. Is there is there something that just isn't represented in the current concerto user data set? Uh, we did expand, um, I added more user types. Right now there's just patrons. So oh, I added okay. additional patron types. Um, which I'll do in a second. And um, is it other possible? than that, the other account will just be for the new branches that we built. Gotcha. How many patrons are there right now? Do you know offhand? <laughs> there are 106 know. patrons. Okay. Um, could we just apply those new patron types to those existing? Or do you feel like that well, will still not be representative enough? They just need risk. to be moved to the other branches. I mean, all the branches need staff accounts. Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm patrons. talking about patron accounts, but yes, staff accounts for sure. I mean, yeah, and there's another hundred staff accounts, but um, yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal to create new ones. Mm -hmm. um, just as long as I just didn't want to start until we had a plan. And I, I, if if we do want to maintain backwards compatibility with the live tests, we probably wouldn't want to change the existing okay. patron and staff. So that um, that kind of leads into with the new. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yeah, here. Let me stop sharing real quick. Um, there you go. I need to get to the right server. And while she's bringing that up, then another um, question that has come up is how this um, will be packaged with Evergreen. Um, because as someone said, and actually multiple people said, Evergreen, the, the bundle of the software just gets bigger and bigger. And this is adding more. I mean, it's maybe not a ton more, but it's also not incidental as far as just storing the stuff. I don't know. At the scale we have it right now, I wouldn't be terribly concerned about it. Mm. I mean, we're talking about things in the magnitude of dozens of bibs, hundreds. Yeah. But I, I it's bigger, but it's really not production not that, size. It, not even close. Right. I mean, not, not even in the same ballpark. It's not even sharing parking space with the ballpark. <laughs> I'd vote for more patrons rather than adding new profiles to existing ones. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so these are I these are the four new pay groups, and I just had a question about whether I should have created those as children of patrons. They should be at the same level. Because all of the con the concert patrons are all at the patrons uh, permission group. Hmm. Wait. So, what's the question? Whether those should uh, be children, of whether patrons. these should be children of patrons or at the same level as patrons. Oh, they they seem like they should be children to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like in Pines, we have we have patrons and we have staff, but then we have patron underneath patrons, right? And we don't allow pa actual patrons to be assigned to the patrons level, just to the sub level. 
we do the same thing in Evergreen, essentially. Yeah. I mean, different labels, but. But we'll need to leave the Charito patrons at patrons. the patrons level mm -hmm. to not break anything. Right. So just wanted to see if that was, if Evergreen is fine with there being patrons at different levels like that. Yeah, it'll be fine. I haven't tried it. Okay. So all of the new, so there'll be a mix then with the new patrons for the new org units. At, some will be patrons level and some will be at these new levels. Makes sense. So can you go back to the org unit map then? Um, which Lynn spent all, the, yeah. yeah, the tab, the first one. Uh, Lynn spent a lot of time actually building out what we recognize as the, um, I'm going to call it the org tree. Don't, there may be another org tree, but there with actual addresses and, and short names and things like that. And I, there may still be, um, no, everything's there. Uh, yeah. But is that going to somehow affect those tests as well that they have now I did leave the sys one BR1 SL1 BR2 sys2 BR3 BM1 and BR4 as the actual org units as the actual I, org unit short names are in the system okay currently. good that that's what now, I was do have, that. no I haven't changed that yet because there was some question about that um I do have new short names for them if we wanted to use them to go along with the rest of the short names that I've created, but I did leave them alone. I say so based on what Jason should. Stevens is Stevenson is saying and others, it may be better to leave them alone so they don't mess with those tests. Right. It, it will break quite a few tests. Okay, so maybe just leave them. Like maybe not maybe. Like Which is the reason why I did leave them. Okay, cool. Now, if all the tests are updated in you know, concert with it. Yeah. That maybe seems like an, another additional project. With a question mark. I have no strong system. desire to leave it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I say. <laughs> Yeah, Michelle says many folks may be used to using Concerto data for local testing and it'd be good to not mess them up. Yeah. Makes sense. But any new ones I did add, I did add it. System slash short name with the dashes in them. So then we do have a few types of data that are listed in the spreadsheet that are still waiting on um there, there's been an expressed desire because it's in here for those to be added but they have not yet so um if there is the possibility to you want me to go through each tab yeah, if you want to. <laughs> settings. Lynn did everything except for adding close dates. I am working on those close dates. Okay. Do. Uh, every every system has close dates in the system now. Awesome. For the for the next two years, I'm, uh, I'm actually put ten years worth in, but I just have to like the next two years in right now. As I say, do we have to do ten years, or would five years suffice? <laughs> I decided 10 years for longevity reasons, because in five years, we'd be adding another five years. Yeah. My concern is that 10 years, we're just going to forget it exists. What? The, this data set? That it needs to be updated in 10 years. And all of a sudden, Concerto <laughs> breaks. I think I'm going to forget within five years. Yes. I'll forget by next year. Um, Jeff has a the, comment here for the that I mentioned. There. Since it, oh, go ahead. For the date sensitive data like acquisitions, doesn't it potentially make more sense to, if we're going to load this from SQL anyway, 
we can put it in the test system as having a specific date, but then tweak the SQL load files to say, use current date, use current date plus one plus year, something. two years, yeah. I mean, whatever, so that it's always current. And right. I think we had talked about that at a previous meeting, but I don't think we ever reached any sort of conclusion on how, how that. Uh, yeah, could be I mean, I would gladly write the SQL to, to add the closed dates in, in the SQL format. Um, and then we just have to do it three or four, I mean, how many years out do you want to use? Uh, Jeff had said, is there a current document that details the goals, motivations of the no, new data, data set um, with this uh, project discussion being out of date? It's not really out of date. It's just been, this has been the document that has followed us along. Um, so it has some old stuff in it, some old dates in it, but it's still right. when we need to document those things. Uh, has That is the document. Uh, and then this spreadsheet um, shows the most current, current work, I guess is the best way to say that. I don't know. Yeah. Oops. The ones of us who have been putting the data in have been using the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, but that document does talk about our initial goals. Um, okay, so acquisitions, um, Tiffany has started working on that. Uh, I would love help if anybody else wants to <laughs> pitch in. I am useless since I don't know anything about acquisitions. Um, I know after... enough about acquisitions to be dangerous, but that's it. <laughs> Same. Um, and maybe Tiffany can get of... somebody. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say I know enough about acquisitions to avoid working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't have that option. Uh, there was the um, there was a line on the actors tab for sets passwords for users. Uh, is that necessary if we're just going the same password for everybody? No. We'll just take that off the list. Mm -hmm. Boop. Um, so we know that I'll there start is working on play. the staff accounts, adding staff accounts to each of the new branches. Um, and then assets, I think are, those are all done. Uh, we don't have any authority data imported. Um, that's another thing I know nothing about. I would say, where are we planning to get this authority data from? Because like Evergreen Indiana, we pay for it. So... Um. I thought I had loaded some authority records. Did you? Uh, oh, yeah. You want to mark in, that on the... In the concerto or in the this version? In, on this server. I loaded okay. new bids to represent meta record sets, and I loaded authority. Um, I don't know if the authority linker is running on this server, though. I'll look and see. I'll wait to check that off. We can wait to check that off until it's confirmed. Yeah. Um, uh, bib records. There's, uh, let's see. There's, so oh, I think these two are duplicate lines. Add more diverse records. Records need more diversity. Um, same thing. I've done, I've done that as well. Uh, adding more diverse records. Yeah. Then I will mark that off too. Go ahead. To um, now that, did you do that for the new branches as well? Add copies for I added bibs. I have not Just added bibs. copies. Okay. So I don't remember if we have a different tab for copies. Tiffany, if you put your yeah. question into the chat, I'll read it aloud for you. And I'm pulling up the server to look at the bibs and off stuff on the And I don't, did I load bibs here? If not, I have some bibs I can add if we need. Has anybody worked on the Japanese, Spanish, and French records? No, but I seem to no. remember Rogan mentioning that. <laughs> that I you? can't remember what all I loaded right now, but I'm looking. Okay. Um, okay. Well, once the, once, 
it sounds like it, we can start adding copies for the other branches at any time. So that's a good. Uh, Tiffany's question is for loading ACK data, I usually load a MARC file. Is there a way to download the bibs that are already in Concerto so I can load those to make line items? I would think you'd be able to export them in the same. Yeah, you should be able to export them like you would normally. Yeah, you can export the bids easily uh, to a staff client like normal. Uh, the authority linker must be running because there are links. When I do an authority uh, authority type search for author and search term token, I'm getting Shakespeare, Factory, Shout, Dan Stevens, Ken Stout, uh, Jibiro Sutajia, Toshi Suzuki, uh, Shinobi, Tarajima, uh, as well as a bunch of other expected stuff. So. I'm running the linker now, Great. just FYI, or just oh, ran, okay. I should say. Okay. So that was that may have been it, catching it just then, but yeah, I I don't remember exactly how much I loaded, but I loaded a good number of things uh, and related authorities for them. Jennifer, when you are you're adding holdings to those mark records to go into acquisitions. Sorry, I'm reading between comments, so I'm not sure if I'm following that whole thing there correctly. I'm more used to doing this in the database, so I'm going slowly here. <laughs> add the funds. Oh, to add the funds there, yes. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, you're going to add that plus too much time? Is that what you have? You really want to stand by that? Plus resources? What? I feel like you're making things up. I think he's talking about some video yeah, that's like video. Posted. I'm going to go to the video real quick. No. We're done with that. <laughs> and Chris, were you saying that you would help Tiffany with the exporter? If not, I can. I can. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. So um, then we have, uh, once we get more patrons in, we, we had a request for more billings and payments of all different types. Um, we did add new bill types already. So new billings related to those billing types can be added. Awesome. Um, Nobody has done anything on booking yet. Um, although Concerto has a pretty decent amount of booking in it already, doesn't it? Um, I don't I know. Jane already. Take a look. So, I mean that. I don't know I'm if it's sure part of concerto. It may be. It's, I feel like it was, but maybe not. So just to check into that. It has a small amount of booking. Um, course reserves. I don't think anybody's done anything in either. Jane added something to concerto. I haven't looked at course reserves since we don't do anything like that with our public libraries. Um, config. I think most of that's done. Um, is our renewals configured? Yeah, auto renewal has been done. Um, and we have nobody's created any hold policies to go with the new circulation modifiers that oh, created. I can look at that. Um, I did just this morning add some circulation limit sets. Uh, for the OPAC. Um, Adding different skins. That's another thing I've never done. Um, if anybody wants to tackle that. In terms of just There's... creating new color schemes for them or? Yeah, I what's really, that about? I don't remember that part of the conversation. Yeah, I don't either. either. Yeah, because that's not really a data thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of removed that. Like I would remove that. 
And Jennifer had a good question to a skin's been added for bootstrap. I'm going to go with no. That they haven't. I can say that fairly well, definitively. I mean, we've, we've always kind of distributed the uh, baseline and then people can tweak and right. work with that. But as you say, not really data. So and as Jason Boyer K-Pak. pointed out, the one kind of exception to that is the monster skin for k pack But it's kind of the exception that proves the rule in a way. That's definitely not something that we really had a big urge, no, um, big need for for testing, though. Something that would be nice to have someday. But well, if we were to make more about data. skins, I mean, I could, I, I could see, you know, different uh, CSS files or different color files distributed with, you know, mainline evergreen. Hey, here's your you know, baseline yeah. green color file for a schema, or blue one, but I, I don't see that as, you know, part of the test data. Yeah, I think that could be a different project. Might might be good to wish list for that yeah. in Launchpad. I would say Jennifer has comments. I think the plan was to have separate OPAC skins for the different different systems in the org tree so you can test how things display and what can be done when things like reciprocal borrower borrowing our setup between systems. Um, let me grab it for you, Michelle. It's probably someplace really easy, but I'm going to go search Launchpad because that's always the best thing to do. <laughs> Launchpad search will never let you down. That's never, that's ever. I've heard all day. <laughs> oh, then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do exactly what you just did, Michelle. <laughs> And expect different results. Just wait. And you will probably get different results. <laughs> I got none. No results. And I don't think there's any serials data in Concerto at all, oh, I unless it. I've just missed it. Or unless yeah, we're that needs to be added. I we have not ha added it. Yeah. We we've don't do serials um, in Pines. So that's another thing I'm not familiar with at all. which makes it even more to have it in here <laughs> so that we can get used to what it looks like. Well, one of the good things that would be that if we, if we did serials was to get somebody on board who's really used to doing the prediction patterns and can show some of the really funky ones to test against. Yeah. I found it. I know, I know there have been serials presentations at the evergreen conferences but i'm it's escaping me who actually did those presentations um at one time nc cardinal had somebody doing a lot with serials i don't know if they still do dan wells did a lot with serials yeah mm -hmm. andrea and he's not at calvin anymore so i wonder if eric yeah. would, would be willing to set up some in here she did a really good presentation on them. We're, we're having, well, we're supposed to have a Zoom webinar on Thursday uh, for serials here and Sarah Childs in Evergreen, Indiana is doing that. So, and I, I think I've talked to her about it, but it's hard to say. Yeah, let's talk about Zoom, but not right now. Um, I can do the predictions because I've done the predictions and everything before. Um, I could load some. I could load some serial records and do the predictions. Type your name in there. Um, Chrissy in the comments. Chrissy has some. Um, so she has some ideas about serials too. Chrissy, you're I, welcome to, to uh, join right. the- um, Chrissy, I'm gonna share this document with you. You're welcome. I have your email address. Okay, I had to make my mic work. If you, what's, if you click at the, on the link that says, um, I forget what it says now, share, share audio and video, is that what it says? Yeah. Then you should be able to use your mic. 
I didn't know Dan had left either. Thought he'd have been off by it. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know how long ago, but. Yeah, it was like. I think it was last year he left. I don't know, but I'm sad about it and don't want to talk about it anymore. Just kidding. I mean, I'm seriously, I'm sad about it, but. Chrissy, you should have gotten a share. Oh, well, whenever you check email, I'm not saying you have it. Okay. Okay, is this working? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Gary just came over. Um, yeah, so my thoughts are you're going to need some bib records for obvious titles that people right. think to look for. <laughs> and um, I don't, you'll want some subscription records attached to those. For that, you'll need serial item templates and serial prediction templates. Right. Um, how detailed you would want all of that branch consortium all that i'm not sure what how detailed you all want that to be i think me you i think all of us is want to look at adding the serials i think we just need to get together and talk separately about all this um because there is so much involved with adding serials i mean because you have to have so many and we can look at what serials that we want to add um Because we would need some serials that have, um, yeah, we well definitely some records with issues from multiple libraries. But we need definitely serials that have regular prediction patterns and some that have irregular prediction patterns. Um, but maybe only an example of like one each. Like, have like maybe 10 bib records that can be shared and then set up examples of a typical an atypical whatever prediction pattern but not get too far into it it's not actually building right. out a full yeah. library it's just an example for libraries so can i put down lynn and chrissy on this yeah sure Chrissy, you in? Sure. And Chrissy, you're welcome to go into this sheet too. And if there are specific tasks, I mean, this is pretty generalized serials that need to be populated. But if you want to put some more specific tasks there to actually make that a little bit more useful in terms of a task tracker, feel free. Okay. And yeah, nobody's going to like grade your accuracy or no. anything. We trust you. That's all of yeah. the tabs. Jennifer says it'd be good to ultimately have those bib IDs titles recorded somewhere to make it easy for users to find them. Jennifer, one of the things that I'm doing in our training server, which is just a little bit more built out than Concerto, is uh, making buckets that will follow that along that have um, some record buckets there for different uses in there and this may be a case to, to do that in there. I, use I love that there. idea of having buckets to track those kind of things. And possibly even to do that with patrons um, if it's a small enough set of them just to keep track of what's included and have it in there already and to promote buckets to everybody far and wide. Yeah because I mean Buckets is something that we've got that should be tested. And I don't even know if we have any buckets in there besides one we recently created. In Concerto, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't believe Concerto had any um, because whenever I stood in creating, it always starts at number one. Yeah. Or ID one. Um, do we have buckets on the list here somewhere? I'm not sure. You know what? I don't, no. I don't think we do. Sorry, my dog. Tiffany, would that be enough data for serials to reliably test if there's dev work done for serials? Um, no. I'm wondering, though, if that's something that needs to be added to this data set or that's something that needs to be uh, added to that larger production type data set. I think 10 would be plenty for what concerto test 
in the tests that are developed for Concerto. Mm -hmm. um, but to actually total for total functionality, um, yeah, no. Because yeah. cereals is so complex and so diverse in the, the, their types of cereals that are out there. Tiffany, do, do you have a recommendation for what you think would be adequate? Or Jennifer, like 50? <laughs> Valid. Right. Um, two handfuls. If you had more than two hands. No, that makes no zero sense. Five handfuls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two scoops. Yeah. There we go. With scoops being ambiguous size. Well, Maybe see, it needs 30 across the organs. Jennifer, that sounds reasonable. And then different types of cereals as well. Yeah. But you've got weekly, monthlies, quarterlies. So we could do 10 weeklies, 10 monthlies, 10 quarterlies, and then be five weird ones. Yeah. Well, you have weirdly weekly ones, weirdly monthly ones, and weirdly quarterly. Because you can also <laughs> have an annual an annual cereal. Yeah, was, annuals too. You can. Yeah. We have lots of bi-monthlies, and some of the bi-monthlies are like July, August, September, October, oh, summer sure. only, July. Or a quarterly, you know, bi monthly, is where you have a monthly and then your yeah, spring my, edition. My, my concern is it, it's very easy to go a ra down a rabbit hole with this. Yes. And if we try yes. to cover every eventuality with cereals, that's We're what never... that large data set that Ruth was talking right. about mm -hmm. needs to be. This does not need to be that. No, this th th this should hit some of the most representative samples for a small test data set that, so, you know, list of all as many possibilities as we can think of needs to be in that large data set. So we're looking at. Weekly titles. Five monthly titles. Monthly titles, excuse me. Bi monthly titles, because there's a lot of bi monthly titles out there. And more all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of more going bi monthly versus monthly. Mm -hmm. I would do an uh, annual and I would do a daily. There are some people right. using this for newspapers, bless them. Right. <laughs> so we have, and quarterly. Also, having said I know, know nothing about cereals, if the building blocks for cereals are there, that would help a lot. Yes, so the testers don't have to create a bunch of building blocks each time to test. That That's really, yes, the thing that stops a lot of testing is having to do all the preliminary admin work before you actually get to the end user staff interfaces, which all needs to be tested too, but probably by different people. All right, so because once you actually get your titles, you need uh, you need yeah. special issues with things, too. right? I have special issues <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, if is there anything else in here or my that we need to discuss today? I know that there. There's another topic that comes after this that we want to definitely give time to um, that. 
And does there need the to be, go ahead, Taryn. I was gonna say all the questions I had have been answered. What topic are you referring to, Ruth? The topic being, do we want this to still be packaged in just as, I think we already talked about this, Never mind. No, um, I, I, I wanna come back to that. Okay, cool. And then I, the other question ah, had to do with, do we want to target um, a release for getting this work done or a time in the future? So it looks vaguely like a deadline. Well, it's not going to be 3.8. <laughs> nope. Um, yeah, I don't sure. have any specific version in mind. I will say that uh, th there's a lot here, a lot. And I don't think it would necessarily be a bad thing if as we go along, we look at some of it and go, you know what? Let, let's trim this back where we're not getting stuff done and get it packaged up and then write the rest up as launch pad tickets to add and follow up on it. I hear what you're saying. And does that mean some type of statement that perhaps 3.9 might be? A target, therefore, February of 2022 being a deadline? I think my <laughs> personal opinion is 3.9 is a reasonable target. And I think we should try to continue to get stuff in and maybe meet around January and ask ourselves, See is there anything at. that needs to be trimmed up? Okay. And we have to recognize that uh, we still haven't come up exactly with who's going to put the labor in to create the additional sequel and loading and all that. And that's non true. It's all Bill. He just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Bill's doing everything. Yeah, you're welcome, Bill. I mean, it's not um, I made that up, by the way. I made that up. That's not true, everybody. No, no. Um, yeah, no, I want to talk about that more when we're not interrupting another flow of conversation. Okay. Do you want to talk about that during Hackaway? Yeah, no, I mean, I'll talk about it now if, if we're done yeah. with whatever else we're talking about. Okay, can I just uh, say one more thing then here and then yeah. Rogan has one more thing. Uh, if there's anybody else that wants to be involved in this project that is not, that doesn't have like edit access to the spreadsheet, doesn't, hasn't like spent any time on it before, go ahead and send me... Um, an email, I'm putting my email into chat, even though I think you get it from somewhere else. And I'll make sure to include you, um, I'll add your name basically to the list so that when we set up meetings to discuss this, you're included and then also that you can um, edit the spreadsheet. Okay, that's all I had to say. Yeah, and since, you know, how we package it up uh, uh, will help determine a possible deadline. I think we need to talk about that now. So floor is yours, Bill. Um, so my first question is, um, are we, all the data that's going into this demo system that's running right now, is it, a, is there a one-to-one -one match with these spreadsheets? I mean, like, you know, is every, I'm, I'm assuming, for example, we're not going to have mark records in the spreadsheet. We're not going to have, there's a lot right. of stuff that's not going to be in the spreadsheet. So it's going to have to come out of the database. Um, I did not so, list out the bibs I added and authorities I added, for example. Right, yeah. right. And that's, you know, that, the whole goal of this was that you wouldn't have to, was that you could go to a UI and use it as a librarian would and, and manage the data. Um, so we got to get it out of the database one way or another. It's not coming out of spreadsheets. Um, right. Yeah. The the ideal end goal would be a, a pile of SQL inserts. Um, I don't know anyone who's going to volunteer to do that. Um, it can be something that we work toward, uh, but um, it's a pretty big job. And part of the goal of this was so that people adding the data wouldn't have to worry about writing SQL. They could just go in and we could just get data, 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 data. Moving it into SQL is kind of the roadblock. Um, so that would be a great end goal. Um, 
one thing I've done as an intermediate goal is um, I've created a way that we can pull the data out and then apply it to a stock data schema. Um, it just just so I didn't forget it, what I was thinking about, I posted it to my to my uh, GitHub. Um, but part of this was I wanted to make sure we had backups of the current data so we didn't lose all the work that was going on, uh, but also as a potential way to handle this if we don't end up getting all the SQL created by hand that we want or however we might want to create the SQL. Um, but the idea here is basically that we create an export from a database that already has the data in it of just the data. Then you go build a regular evergreen system, have it export its schema, create a database from that, and then load the data into that secondary database. And it works fine. Um, so in the meantime, if someone wants a test system with all this extra data in it, it can be done with the stuff I have on GitHub here. Um, so then the question remains, uh, you know, who's going to try to write all this SQL? And is that, in fact, how we want to do this? <clears throat> Yeah, so the um, if 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 there was a version breaking change so that one chunk of data didn't work didn't work with one database schema, then we would have to create a version of the data that works with that second schema, which is it's fairly easy to do. Install database one, export the data. Or sorry, install database one, upgrade it, and then export the data, and then you have the new data export. Um, anyway, so we don't, I guess we don't have to answer this now necessarily, but, um, uh, right, exactly. Like if we added a new column that didn't have a default value in the data export, then we'd have to create a new data export that had a value for that, uh, new column. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, there's, there's no easy answers for this, unfortunately. It's possible that creating the SQL is not as problematic as I think it's going to be. Um, but uh, until then, this is something that sort of works. Yeah, I, I think ultimately we're going to want to have the inserts, uh, but it's going to be a lot of work. And also it means it's a never-ending job. Uh, right. Right. As we add more data, we're adding more stuff. Whereas, again, I'm not necessarily saying that the, the stuff that I posted is should be the end goal, only that, um, well, what am I saying? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, my, my concern is I don't want the SQL part of it to slow the entire rest of it down. That was like kind of the thing going into all this to begin with was, well, if we have to write it as SQL, then this is just going to take forever. I think. Well, sorry, go ahead. One just, and this just goes to this will need maintainers, which yes, it, it would. But also that we're hoping that there will be some longevity to this data that we're adding now so that we're not like constantly adding more. I mean, you think how long Concerto has, I mean, it's had a few things added over the years, but it hasn't been a constant addition of True. things. Um, and this would not represent something there like, we're going to do this again next year and next year and next year that hopefully it has some longevity to it. So it's not an onerous maintenance to it hopefully yeah but i don't know yeah no that i mean that's a good point um if we work up the sql scripts it's not going to be we might occasionally be adding little bits of sql here and there to add new data for new tables but it's not going to be a big project each time um part of the complication blake uh just like a script that reads the schema loops through all the tables and writes the answer queries um so there's a ton of data that gets added by evergreen stock so whatever adds this other data has to avoid all of that existing data so it's 
not quite as easy as just a list of inserts from the existing data set. It has to be, we want these org units, but not these, because these were added by the stock schema, but these were added by us, so we only want these secondary org units. There's a, we, you know, you get, well, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. The other thing that I will say, and I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here with no authority to say this yet at all, but this started out as a prioritized project by the ECDI, um, meaning that they're willing to put some money behind it. And so that if this gets to a point where we need to pay somebody to do that, I yeah. feel pretty confident that we can pay somebody to do that part of it, which that tends to be a little bit of an incentive for people rather than, wow, you're going to feel really good at the end of the day about this. Well, that, and you can also like buy dinner because you got paid a wage will make people feel better, I think. So that should probably be kept in mind too, that this is something that there is also um, some more resource behind that. If we get to the point uh, where it's not, I don't want to say a hobby thing. I know all of us do this actually for a living, but um, if it needs a little bit more to get it going, um, we can do that, I think. So that's great. A, a person that, that requires people to vote on spending money. But nonetheless, right. I can encourage I mean, that's, them to that's, do so. That's a, an, an achievable goal, and you don't need a ton of expertise to do that. Right. Um, so that's great. That'd be cool if someone... Uh, could be paid to write the the sequel inserts. The sequel for it. Um, Although so, we need kind of a stopping point where we say all this data is in, and if we're approaching somebody, the corp, the institutional corporate community, we um, this is how much you're being contracted for. Right. So we'll have to have a stopping point for the data first. Yeah, and and that will yes, yeah. I'll just say yes. <laughs> um. Michelle uh, says, so for example, this org tree would exist along with the concerto one. It, yeah, it's essentially, we have the concerto org tree and then new org units are added to it. So it's just an, uh, an expansion of the concerto org tree. But when you first install Evergreen by itself, it has its own org tree and then we're just, and even, <laughs> so, so when you install Evergreen without concerto, you get a batch of org units, you get a batch of profiles, you get, um, uh, you know, some configuration data. There's a whole bunch of data that goes in with just Evergreen. And then there's the Concerto data set, which is optionally installed. And then there's this third thing, which is building on top of the Concerto data set. Um, so, yeah, it's it's essentially three different data sets. But um, in order to get this third one installed with SQL inserts, it needs to know not to clobber the stuff that's installed with the stock data inserts. Anything else? Are there circumstances where people would still want to use Concerto instead of the expanded one? Maybe if you worked at the Berkeley College of Music. Well, since the expanded one will include Concerto, I imagine the current Concerto will eventually go away or you know, be absorbed by the expanded one. Yeah. I I, I don't, I, I view it as Concerto version two personally. Yeah. That's a great yeah. way to think about it. Blake has I, a question. Time to, time to load does seem like a consideration, but it's, we're not really adding that much data. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about hundreds right. of records, not, you know, hundreds of thousands of records. Yeah, I, I mean, for example, for serials, we're talking about really only needing a couple dozen, you know. And right. For bibs, we're talking about adding, I added 20, about 20 bibs, and that added a lot of complexity. You don't need, uh, this This is not an attempt to create something that you do stress testing with, um, mm -hmm. just to add more testing scenarios. Yeah, I understand the smaller versus larger, but you know, if, if on your VM uh, a breaking point is 170 bibs versus 150, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. 
Oh no! <laughs> you need a new VM. I know Bill Gates said, you know, 320K would be enough for everybody, but. I thought you were just going to stop at it. I know Bill Gates. I'm like, really? Well, what's up, man? <laughs> and actually, that statement's apocryphal, but I still. <laughs> If that's if that's everything, I, and I there'll be us around, lots of us around. Um, but I will send out then something in the next days, weeks to set up the next meeting. Do we want to wait until after the first of the year? What do you want to do? Am I supposed to be leading this? Because I'm a terrible leader when it comes to this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Never let me coordinate anything. <laughs> well, Sorry. if our if our goal is to have it, when did we decide our goal was to have all the data added? Oh, uh, was to reevaluate uh, in January to see where we were at. But we can meet before that. Maybe we should. Maybe we could just do like a quick, like twenty minute touch base at the start of December. Let's do. Oh, I'll send out up. a doodle poll because I love saying doodle in front of like grown adults. Uh, and um, yeah, I'll send okay, that out. Uh, and we'll uh, do that. Let me ask one quick question before we go, if you don't mind, uh, regarding the bibliographic records. The tasks for the non English records say native records. So native. we want bibs that are entirely written in those languages versus just have some of the script. I don't remember who actually added those tasks to the list. I mean, for Sorry. example, Japanese. I, I can get records that have, you know, hiragana, kanji, uh, katakana, and mm -hmm. author and title fields and stuff like that. Um, but where the entire record is cataloged in Japanese could be fairly challenging. I think for our purposes, as long as it has the language represented it in, in the mark. Yeah, I, I would think the, the concern is more representation of Unicode characters than yes. anything else. Because for us, for us to even be able to read oh. a, a Japanese entire mark record in Japanese would be difficult Impossible. for a lot of us. <laughs> Yeah, but you can tell if the Unicode screws up that it's a bunch of gibberish asking right. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we did need <laughs> actual native records, then we would probably the easiest to be, get would be the check some check ones. Yeah. Um, right. Because of our and I think we probably there. should add some check ones in there. I yeah, I think that that would probably be very useful if we're looking at this being for well, I will go ahead and put myself down for getting these existing ones. If somebody wants to touch base with Yasna. And, and then Jennifer has to, they may be able to supply some French records. That would be great. Yeah. Well, we may be able to, sounds like volunteering. So I put you down for it, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. It definitely is volunteering. All right, I'll shut up again. Okay. Is enabling the language picker in the OPAC staff client something we'd also look at? I what do you mean idea. exactly? Um, I don't want to go into it a lot right now, but there is some dev related to languages and patron languages and stuff. So I, I would suggest we put that off for right now. Yeah, because your languages are, I, yeah, the languages are done at Apache, not and actually within Evergreen itself. Well, but there is some work to create patron preferred set languages in Evergreen. That's true. And that's currently in development. Oh, 
Um, can I put a hard end on this conversation real quick though and maybe come back to this so that you can go into, oh no, Blake is the one who wanted to talk about this next thing with Bill and his brain is churning. Oh no. Uh, go into the next topic, which is not got me involved in it. I'll just be listening. So, okay. I will go ahead and send out the doodle poll. Go ahead and send me an email if you have not been included. I don't know if I said all those words in the right order. Uh, if you haven't been included heretofore, or however, and want to be, and I'll include you in that. And I'll send that out by the end of today. Sounds optimistic. It's trivial to load data from a spreadsheet when this spreadsheet is properly formatted. <laughs> I'm going to properly format a spreadsheet, Jason. What are you talking about? It's not even happening. Okay. I'm going to get off here because that's the best way to shut me up. And then I think is it Bill and Blake that wanted to talk about browsers? What are we talking about? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs>